I interpreted this uh, topic, deep learning implications for education in my way, as always, and this way is that I'm trying to look what science tells us how to unleash creativity in the human mind and how to improve the learning curve to its maximum. Okay? This is the question that interests me here. And what we know from preliminary findings, also from last year, we coined the term creativity response. Okay? And I mentioned six aspects on a very general level that can increase the learning curve. It's very basic, but it's good science. Good sleep, mm -hmm. social contacts, mm -hmm. good food, meditation, exercise, and multisensory learning. Okay? Just keep in mind. If you, don't, if you don't know what kind of curriculum you're running for, run for the creativity response. It will improve your learning curve. Second statement. If it comes to the question how creativity can be unleashed, there is findings showing that actually creativity happens in an interesting process between focusing on a topic and getting in a so-called wandering mind. You oscillate between focusing on something and being completely detached. And this process of oscillating between detached and attached has also a neurological correlate. It's called um, the default network mode. And this is the mode you're in, signaled here in this uh, graph, when you are not focused. At the moment, you're all focused. You've got to get in a default network mo mode in order to be more creative. Good data. Third preliminary is the Heckman curves. I mean, sorry, if we talk about learning curve, we've got to talk about Heckman. Heckman got the Nobel Prize. Okay? So it's not just a some marginal scholar thinking about learning. If we want to improve the learning curve, we've got to invest in the first three to five years. Highest return of investment. Not invest in people my age. It's too late. Take the money, invest in early intervention that makes the difference. The first five years, this is where the music plays. Okay? This is my first comment. Second comment. Indeed, the question is how you improve the learning curve again. Very good statement just been done by Gary and um, uh, my co-author. Co I'm just mentioning again the Haiti study. 500, 800 meta-analysis. 800 meta-analysis. 50,000 studies on 80 million students. Okay. If we're talking about learning, we should read the stuff. I highly recommend. And one of the findings is it's always the personal and interpersonal factors that oversteer institutional factors. It's not the amount of not the amount of money you pour in the system. It's not the amount of institutional factors like classroom, the amount of people who are in the room, or socioeconomic things. It's about personal and interpersonal factors that make a difference. We should talk about that. Oversteering by factor two, 500 meta-analysis. Keep in mind. Digital revolution. We talk about all the digital stuff you're using here, you know, iPad and iPhone and mocks and all that stuff. Very good, but has only a serving function, a supportive serving function, enabling large groups of population on the planet to access education and helps facilitating personalizing education. But that's about it. We can talk about that. Retention rate, good data, 
Teaching others has the highest intention rate. Okay? Doing it yourself is better, and listening to others like you do now is low. So if you listen to me, forget it. Do it yourself, much better. Showing someone else has the highest retention rate. If this is true, that we have a creativity response, and we know more or less what's happening in the brain when we are creative, and we know the Heckman curves. If it's true that interpersonal uh, learning factors are more important, at least by factor two, than institutional factors, if it's true that digital devices have a serving function, and if it's true that retention rate is highest if you do something, you teach it to others. At the moment, on a global level, we are running in the so-called tertiary educational fallacy. We're trying to train everybody in higher education. This is, sorry to say, from findings in life science, this is stupid. This is stupid. We are training too many people in higher education. What we need is much more dual vocational training. We have in Europe a 500-year history, and alone in Germany, 136 dual vocational training programs, which are different to higher education programs which are established in 700 years, where people get trained according to the first four to five parameters. Thank you very much.